Peekaboo. Peekaboo. I see you. Oh, 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 no, I saw you for a second. You don't try to play funny with me. Hey, everybody, it's Chucka Conroy. Welcome back to more Xenoblade Chronicles 2. Last time, we met Professor Susu in the flesh. And, uh, metal prosthetics, those two. He invented Poppy Buster, who we got to come with us on our journey, and we got to understand her on a bit of a service level. Well, him, actually. I guess the Poppy Mark II doesn't really have a gender because it's just a shell that Poppy controls remotely, but semantics of a robotic gender aside, this time we find ourselves back in Torigoth Relay Base. We, uh, won't be doing anything for Captain Podrick. If you ever need anything, man, you just say the word, okay? I'm here for you. We're gonna go see Ash over here. Hey, can't say I'm in the mood for pleasantries. Is something the matter? We sent vermin specialist with an armed escort off to the vault, but they come, uh, they're late coming back by days. The critters are, have, have attacked villagers and knop on traders, so we needed to look into population control methods. Two of the three guards we sent were drivers. I didn't expect any issues when it came to combat, but well, how unfortunate. Why does Morai keep? swinging her arm around every time she says anything. It looks really silly. We're stretched thin enough as it is when uh, two of our drivers go missing, as you can imagine. Now the brass don't want to risk losing even more people if something were to happen to the rescue party. Whoop! Allow us to assist. You would really? I hate to ask such a dangerous job of strangers, but... Hmm, what's this? Oh, you've got blades! Well, that's a stroke of luck. Many Vulf sightings have been uh, made near Varnix's Plunge. That's where the researcher was headed. It's big waterfall in the Titan's lower back. Whoop! Understood. I hope uh, the four. I hope the four are unharmed. Best of luck to you. That's just going to be a thing that bothers me every single time. We have Morag in the lead of the party, which is going to be a lot because she's got a new blade to go over. She's probably going to have a lot of other new blades because she's got to catch up with Rex and Nia. Uh, all right. So we want to go to upper level right. Where's the? I turned off the skip travel points. Why would I do that? <laughs> I get so into it whenever I play games. I'm always clenching my controller in weird ways whenever I get excited. And I tend to click the left stick without meaning to, turning off the on-screen uh, help that you get for uh, what blades do and what the arts do. Uh, I tend to turn off things on the map without meaning to. I just, I get so into it, man. Like, I just, I, my arms are twitching and I grope the controller. I don't know if I want to be admitting to this, but I do a lot of weird things with my hands whenever I'm playing video games because I just get so excited. And that leads to a lot of my problems. The researcher is unaccounted for. There's a chance they got away. I'll give you the lowdown later. Dead. I hope things went and are well. those bite marks? And there, tracks on the ground. Very well. We should see where they lead us. And the third dead Imperial soldier, I guess he doesn't matter. Oh well. Once again, we don't follow tracks by walking around. No, 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 no. We skip travel to where the objective says they are. Roger Wilco. Woo! Good sticking that landing on some uneven rocks. I can't imagine that's too easy for a robot to do. Well. Poppy Shall Buster's got a few tricks up her uh, up his sleeve that we were not able to see before. It's kind of hard to call anything with Poppy in its name a he, though, but I guess the Poppy Buster itself is. Dead Vault. What a remarkably large wound. A wolf carcass, but who is the assailant? Ah, this is. There are more tracks here, larger than before. Very well. We can follow them. Let's not tarry. This objective takes us right back to square one. Traveler's resting tree. And once again, we jump off of the same cliff. We were actually five feet from where we needed to go this entire time, but they felt like giving us the runaround. It's called game design. Vermin specialist. Ah! That's what she said. Face off against the giant. Whoa! I didn't think it was gonna come up that fast. Okay, uh, there I go, turning up on again. Rampaging Saurus. Let's do it. <laughs> Uh, Morag, you are in deep doo-doo right now. Oh my god! Dinah tail! Whoa, everyone's dead! No. So that's a real thing that just happened. Hey, at least we got our level two of a skill unlock. That'll make this a lot easier, right? Well, no, we gotta... 
As weird as this sounds, and this does kind of fit my pet peeve of side quests not like being obvious that you can't handle them, uh, you do kind of have to bash your head against this thing doing as best as you can for a little while because the next objective is triggered if you would be so kind. Yes, when you reduce 1% of its HP, that's a requirement. We may be in over our heads. Let's choose wisely. If you say, think you can take me, your Ardanian nationalism gets you a one-way ticket to having to actually defeat this thing in a fair fight. It's level 91. You probably won't be doing it during the main story, but you can do this if you want. Or if you're a coward like me, you can just say no. Okay. Cutscene over. Someone was paid to storyboard that and someone was paid to animate it. <laughs> and someone was paid to watch it a hundred times to make sure it didn't break. Oh, Ashy boy. <laughs> I'm the special inquisitor, so I can jump over the men doing push-ups. You've returned. What news of the research party? So the thing is, a rampaging Saurus. I never knew creatures like that lived in Gormot. So everyone's, I see. I'd, I'd like to go pay my respects, but with that thing around, it might be too dangerous for me. Whoop. So, well, this is a tricky conundrum. Whoop. A rampaging Saurus. Hmm. There's a scholar by the name of Tishka in the Baraf of, uh, of Industrial Ward of the Ardanian capital, Alba Kavanich. I vaguely remember him publishing a paper on the rampaging Saurus. Maybe he'd know a good way to dispatch one. All right. I'm sorry, I know it's not a lot to go on, but I appreciate your continued help, friend. Back at the capital, ah, uh, Ryan and Arian and Arian, Nan, whichever you prefer, I don't know what you like to be called. Nobody really gave me a straight answer on how that name is actually pronounced. I'm very disappointed in you people. You know, your name spelled backwards looks like a certain, you've probably heard it in high school, we all have. Oh, hello. Are you a biology enthusiast? Crops have been failing recently. That's why I'm researching how to increase our agricultural... Oh, he's... Oh my. When we were both young, we'd often team up to work in the field. A rampaging Soros, hmm? We'd be interested to hear the details. I'm just a humble biologist, but... Hold on. There's one plant with the properties that may be of use here. You see, a few years back, I published a research paper on Benoit Nuts and the Rampaging Saurus. You see, when a Rampaging Saurus ingests Benoit Nuts, it becomes greatly intoxicated, which impairs its motor skills. In other words, it's as if it's drunk. You may be able to use this fact to more easily deal with even the most ferocious of specimens. I see. The Rampaging Saurus likely, uh, normally uh, like to hide in their roosts, making them hard to track down but they do mark their territory by leaving claw marks around the area. By placing a Benoit nut inside the marked territory to lure the beast out, if it takes the bait, it'll be all yours. We'll give it our best shot. Benoit nuts come from a rare plant which grows in more Ardain. I remember hearing you can gather them near Turbine Tower. Best of luck in your search. I wish I'd gone with them. I might have noticed the danger and warned them. At least by advising you, I can put my mind at ease a little. Best of luck. This is surprisingly sad. At least with it being a plant that grows in more Ardain, if it can grow here, we don't have to worry about be it becoming extinct anytime soon. And we're you. And we're you. Let's take it at our own pace, okay? Shut up. I like rushing through things in life. <laughs> no, okay, no, I'm not gonna say that. I do tend to like to get things done in a schedule. If I say something is going to be done by an appointed time, I try to always get it done by that appointed time. Over there is our red little jar. The garden. Is it a bag? Oh. It's Actually, yeah, it's more of a bag. I always kind of thought it was a candle jar. Huh, learn something new every day. It's even got a little twist tie thing on it. I can't imagine too many people have ever looked at this thing that closely. That sounds like a walk on the other side. More of a patient man's way of playing, if you will, where I could see somebody always stopping to like really look at how everything looks. But me, I'm always so quick to want to finish quest objectives that I never really stop and think about, what does it mean to be a quest objective? What does it truly look like? We'll walk into the, uh? Lovely. 
I guess this works. Level 36! Looking a lot better, don't you think? And because you got a lot of health, you should be a prime, prime guinea pig of epic proportions to show us what else Poppy Buster is capable of. First off, in the Japanese-only uh, art book, there is an additional page that gives us concept art on Poppy Buster, as this includes details on the DLC, which our art book didn't do as it was available at launch. Yeah, even when you get something that Japan doesn't, they still manage to get something that you don't out of the deal. I feel bad for the artist who had to decide how the face would come apart for Poppy to hide inside of it. It's one of those things that you don't really think about whenever you see it animating on a screen, if you don't have experience with that, though, but it's something that somebody had to do. Getting into what we're doing, Poppy Buster is still gonna take a while to get up to its level three special. A downside of Poppy Buster that has not been fixed by its abilities is the long cooldowns that Shield Hammers have on their arts. Level three special, Buster Mirage, a physical seven hit attack. Got some radius, got some knockback, and it does increase damage to enemies targeting the user. I would recommend this special pretty highly if not for that level four special gimmick that we've seen. That thing is Poppy Buster's bread and butter. Makes him very good in long fights. Kind of why I like you for this. You know what, uh, Rex, you can do level two of it and I can handle the toppling. Good. Moving so slowly right here. Poppy Buster's skills at level one don't really make uh, him all that good for that. And now. Morag, as you would say, the Coupe de Gras! Drive you into the ground! Time for you know what! Initiating self destruct It manages to bust even Poppy herself. Oh, Lightning Buster level three, but that's not what's important. Now, this special comes with a downside. It's saying that it was initiating self-destruct was not just idly sounding cool. It actually does blow up. Poppy Buster disappears from the field for a few seconds after using it, preventing any further specials from being used. You have to also wait for that cooldown before being able to do it again. I've spoken very positively of Poppy Buster up at this point, so how about we talk about some of the downsides as well, because that's only fair. Shield Hammers have long cooldowns, even with Poppy Buster's added ability. That is a drawback, and it's not all sunshine and rainbows. Poppy Buster practically never gets critical hits. Even with those high hit count, level three and level four, it's Let's not going it to happen. Our own pace. And to take okay. advantage of that level four special thing at all, you have to play as Poppy Buster, and a lot of people don't like playing as the slow bulky class. If you do, then that's great, if you don't mind it. But the AI will the AI will never use a level four special. You can't possibly tell them to do that or wait for a recharge. It's only for the player. Hi again. We have just returned. You've taken care of the rampaging Soros. I can't tell you how happy I am to hear that. All in a day's work. Seriously, I don't know how to thank you enough. Would you mind telling me exactly where you found them all? Roger. Thank you. At the very least, I expect the Volf won't be too keen to return where their comrades fell. Since you've taken care of the rampaging Soros, the threat to the area should have passed. I think I'll go pay my respects to my fallen friends. That, and I'd like to have something I could pass on to their families. Thank you once again for your cooperation. Another one done, a rhombus chip and a knockback resist two. One, two, three, oh. Rhombus Chip is common, seeming to focus on block rate before all else. Sure. This can go on Electra. She has the highest block rate of any blade in the game. This leans into her quite well, and we are going to use every blade at least some of the time. I didn't like it for anybody else. Poppy Alpha's doing well. Poppy Busters still hold many secrets. I'll support you with all I've got. I'll keep on at it. The power to do what needs to be done. I want to go back to the Traveler's Resting Tree and closer inspect that area. The Rampaging Soros, or sorry, Ancient Soros is what replaces it. But this little nook here where it made its home is now available and ripe for the taking. Inside is a gold chest. If I may. 
A rare core crystal and a lot of money. It's like a dragon guarding golden jewels. Now, I don't know if this has been obvious, but I gotta say it. You wanna know the best part of Poppy Buster? No Poppy Swap. All right, is what I say for all of us. No fourth option on that menu. None of that crap. You don't have to worry about doing Poppy Swap for yet another blade. It's fine. It's kind of weird that Poppy Buster is a form of Poppy for all the other drivers. I remember when they first unveiled it, I thought that it was going to, you know, round out Tora. We're pretty much done in Gormot, but as one last thing, I want to run through the city and see if I can find any more Merc missions. I don't believe I've ever shown this. Out on this long stretch of metallic industry in Grod Residential Zone is a salvage point. Oh, I can't wait. Bye, Rex. Hi, Rex. Yo. Avix! No! Oh, oh man. Did I come up with a load of guff again? Yes, yes you did. Hey Guff, how's it going? Let's end this sweat. Seriously? I feel so a shield hammer cannot one-hit a level four. Here's a new detail. By jumping on those boxes over that way, making it up onto the rooftops, and just following the natural path of things, we end up over this way. I don't believe that this door is open until after Morag becomes a party member. Yet another one of those. A lot of boosters here. Ooh. Inside this door. It's the consulate. This is where the famous scene of Captain Padraig's fall from grace occurred. Has a this treasure trove inside. Having a dark orb and a common core crystal. What does this core crystal have inside it? I want to know. I'm gonna start doing this whenever we find core crystals in important areas. Just wake them up right away, see what they have. I believe this blade is government property, so it should go to you, Morag. Oh, just a common blade. Two crowns, dark. Fitting of the dark orb. Increased damage dealt when affinity is at max. And an increased block rate on a chroma katana. Hakusui, Hakusui you're actually kind of good. The dark orb increases damage dealt when an ally is incapacitated. Good on a character like Morag if it's going to go anywhere. I just don't like basing my strategy around dying. At most... I would base my strategy around having HP low. Here's something that blends in over by the Arden on the Clume farm. We're just gonna steal this little boy's treasure. He's too busy doing such trivial things as working to be able to protect his salary, yay. There was nothing. I didn't find a single Merc mission or contract in all of Gormoth that we can now get. Ash has something new to say on a repeat visit. I do hope you'll remain here at Toragoth Relay Station for a while, Lady Morag. There's always a sense of calm while you're here. Because we know that whatever happens, you'll protect the peace in Gormon. It wouldn't be exaggerating to say that you're a rocket shield, ma'am. Aww. I like this quest. It's not the most plot relevant thing in the world, or has some or has some kind of super cool, ultra chocolatey fudge coated blade attached to it, but it's a nice one. Not all of them have to be like that. And the depth that you could actually choose to fight a level 90 enemy to beat it that way and get a different outcome is intriguing. It's a quest I think about from time to time. I know this was one of our lighter outings, but that's everything that we can do in Gormont, and the next things that I want to take care of are awfully long, so rather than have us be here for over an hour, I think we're gonna stop there. Next time on Xenoblade Chronicles 2, we move on from Gormont into Uriya, seeing some new things there and getting to know one of our earliest blades a lot better. See you guys then.